You know, I have preached for over 50 years now that every believer is a missionary. You're either a goer, one who goes, or a sender, one who sends. And you can either be the one that goes to the jungles and eats the monkeys and eats the worms, or you can be the one that prays and sends the money to uh, let somebody else eat worms for you. But uh, what you need to realize is that we're on the same team. There's not a us against them. Uh, the goer's not more important than the sender. The sender's not more important than the goer. Each one makes the other functionable. Each one makes the other one where they can do their job. You know, if I'm sitting here with a bank full of money uh, and I'm wanting to send somebody to the mission fields, but nobody will go, well, then I can't fulfill my call as a sender. By the same token, if I'm sitting here as a missionary and, and wanting to go to Africa, to India, to around the world to preach the gospel, where the uh, name the name of Jesus where it's not named and shine the light where the light's dim, but nobody will send me, then I can't fulfill my call as a goer. So it takes the goer and the sender, not one more important than the other, but they function together and that they too become one. They, they, they become a whole person. I had a lady many years ago up in the Dakotas tell me, she said, Brother Terry, if you'll go eat my worms for me, I'll send you money every month uh, so you can go and eat my worms and I'll just stay here and be a sender. But uh, find out what you are, a go or a sender. Renee and I get to be both. Jackie and I always got to be both. Uh, we go all the time. Of course, we send to a lot more places than we go because we're missionary partners and, uh, with people uh, around the world too that we support, that we love, and that we help them do what they're doing. So goer or sender makes no difference you do what god called you to do as long as you're doing something we can't opt out of the system you have to be a missionary you have to be involved in getting the gospel to the world so all of heaven is watching the earth all the time looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Bless you and thank you so much for joining us today. We are just thrilled to have you on the program with us. And we're just going to talk about some more good stuff from the Word of God. It's an endless, endless cachet here of information that we need every single word of in the times and, and the circumstances that so many people are living in around the world. My goodness gracious, I don't see how anybody escapes um, what's going on around them. And to not be moved by those things, and to not, and and then there's a sadness and a disappointment of watching people just absolutely self-destruct. Oh yeah, that's in this sad. day and time that we're living in. So you know, those I don't want to just use those as cliches, but I, we want to you to be aware of the hour that we live in, where you know it gets down to in the in the New Testament where the Apostle Paul says we need to warn and admonish. Uh, it says, warn, admonish, and encourage one another daily. Absolutely. And so when it gets down to, we got to do this every single day, <laughs> then then we want to do our part to help you, help you because we see how necessary it is for us. You know, and we're, we're in the ministry. I mean, we're full-time, what they say, full-time in the ministry. And if we see the, the absolute necessity, the liability of if we don't, then the blessing, if we do live in the blessing and the goodness of God and the promises of God, then we know the people out of the ministry need it as much or more than we do. I mean, we've got to all oh, have this word and we've got to know how to use our faith. We get, we have to know and learn how to pray and how to get our prayers answered. And so it's, it's prayer and faith working together to reach the world. And in the meantime, we get blessed because we're the pipe it's coming through. And like you said, it's a daily thing. Yeah. This isn't one and done. No. <laughs> you know, this isn't, well, Lord bless me. And then you never right. think about it again. Right, right. Uh, it, it's a, we're in a, we're in a battle. That's right. You know, if there wasn't a devil, 
then uh, a lot of things wouldn't matter. Yeah, right. It wasn't the devil. It wouldn't matter where you go to church. But it does matter where you go to church because there is a devil. We have an enemy. And he's always trying to kill you. Right. You know, that series I've just taught recently, and then we talked about numbers of times on our on our program uh, about the five smooth stones yes. and how to win every time. That's you, so you know, good. I talked about the secret so sauce true. and all those miracles that I had over all these years. Right. It was always a, a consistent thing of doing the name and the blood and the word and the covenant and the power of the Holy Spirit. And then the secret sauce was do it again. It wasn't just one and done. Now, that confuses some people sometimes right. they've heard they've heard preachers say uh just just pray one time in faith well you just pray one time in faith about some things right. is exactly right like if you're praying a prayer of petition like father i need you i'm believing you for a new car or i'm believing you for a certain amount of money you can pray that one one petition but if it's a, if it's a battle you're you're in if right. it's a if it's a cancer is trying to destroy your body or glass coming after you you know <laughs> to kill you then yeah. it's not just one and done but you you, you do it until you win. Right. You know, it's a continuous. Right. Uh, it, it's a hearing and continue hearing. It's a saying right. and continue saying. You know, if you're not, if your mouth's not moving, you're, you're not using faith. That's right. And if, you're, and if your body's not moving in line with your mouth, you're not using faith. Because faith is always going to be, as I've said to you many times on this program and certainly in pulpits around the world, uh, faith is always going to speak. Right. There's no such thing as faith not speaking. Faith has to speak. It's going right. to talk. Uh, what saith it, Paul said, Romans right. chapter 10. He said, what That's saith right. it? Yeah. Uh, the word of faith is neither even in thy mouth and in thy heart. So it's always got to be a, a mouth spoken thing, spoken by the mouth. The tongue's the mixture of faith. We've talked about that. And then it's got to be believed in the heart. That's right. Not believed in the head, Jesus. believed in the heart. Yes. And then there's got to be a commitment. Right. You know, when Jesus said to the fig tree, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever, then, then he committed himself. In the very next five words are some of the most important words in the Bible. It says, and his disciples heard it. In other words, he he said he talked to a tree, right. but he yes. talked out loud, loud enough for 12 guys you, to hear it. He oh, committed right. himself. He said right. in front of his staff, now if nothing happens to that tree, even though they've heard him say something is going to happen to the tree, they're going to leave him. Mm -hmm. But he's now committed himself. Just like whenever I stood up and said, I decree as a man of God that this drought in Zimbabwe is officially broken. It'll drain the next 24 hours uh, or, or I'm not a man of God. And like I stood up in Mexico and said, this plant's not going to close, even though the company said it's going to close. Right. The president of Mexico right. said it's going right. to close. The newspaper said it's going to close. Everybody else says it's going to close. You say it's going to close. I say as an apostle of God, this plant will not close next Wednesday nor thereafter in the name of Jesus. And if it does, you can tell everybody in these two cities, Ciudad Sagún and Tepepulco, that the God of Terry Mize is a liar. I'm a false prophet. I'm not a man of God. I'll pack my bags and leave town. You don't ever have that's, to listen to me again. Yeah, that's I committed, committed myself. <laughs> now, I couldn't. Now, if yeah. that thing had closed Wednesday morning right. like everybody said it was right. going to, right. I couldn't have stayed in that town. Right. Well, that would run me out on a rail. I was committed. So faith always commits. It always speaks. That's it right. always commits. And and the commit a lot of times is is based on an action. So you always act. Faith, Smith Wigglesworth used to say, "Faith is an act. Yeah. Faith is an act. Faith is an act." James two yes, tell James told us said said faith without works, works or without an act or without corresponding actions is dead. You can have all the faith in the world, but if there's no right. act to it, it's dead faith. That's right. You know, you can have a hundred pounds of live faith or a hundred pounds of dead faith. You know, you, you <laughs> if you don't, if you don't you're act. Do, yeah, you're, you're acting one way or the other, exactly. whether you like it or not. You, you know, Hudson Taylor said, Terry, and, and you and I like to quote dead people <laughs> from the word well, of God. To be dead. Everybody. Uh, but, you know, I just think it's so marvelous that that Hudson Taylor, you know, back 150 years ago. Sure. Said that that. Uh, you know, when you hear the word of God, th that you have to put, uh, you know, the, the the word of God, you know, with an act of, course. of faith, of you know, course. the practical, do the practical right. will equal wisdom. Yeah. And when you when you do that from the and, and these are all things that are that are written in the word of God. And if you'll go back and read Romans 10 again, Paul said that this was the very word of faith. He said, that's what we preach. Yeah. He said, yeah. that's how we preach it. Exactly. And so there and he taught how faith was in two places. Faith is in the heart. You have to believe it. And then it says faith is in the mouth. You have to confess it. Then, as Terry's saying, then you have to do something 
that acts like what you just believed and said out of your mouth is true. Then That's really all faith is, is acting, acting like, like God told the truth. Right. And excuse me, and as you do that, then as you begin to to believe in the heart and confess with the mouth, and then you begin to act that faith yourself, then after a while you're committed and you do something and people begin to see that you're committed to literally bringing to pass your own faith. Exactly. You're bringing exactly. to pass what you're saying out mm -hmm. of your mouth, yeah. what you're believing in your heart, and you begin to act like a faith man or woman. And, and people, unbelievers or even unbelieving believers, uh, don't really understand what that confessing of the Word of God does. I, I think it was, it was Brother Copeland many, many years ago, he talked about, Terry, about how... Uh, you know, especially to us Pentecostals, we were we were always just, you know, bombard the gates of heaven, you know, pray and pray and wear and, God out, wear God out, and nearly beg God to do something that he already had given and promised to in his word of exactly. God. And we we didn't have to beg God. And we didn't know that. We just thought that's how you were supposed to do it. Try to talk God into doing something that we really needed him to do. And so something he said he would do. And then we're trying to twist his arm to make him do it, what he said he'd do. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, we just misses something. we missed that. And thank God they brought us up to here. That you know, when you don't know anything, then mm -hmm. you then you're born again right. and you're still trying to learn. And then you get filled with the Holy Ghost and go among the Pentecostals. Then they know about how to pray. Right. I mean, they know how to oh, pray yeah. in tongues. They, you know? Yeah, they do. And then thank God I was already up here. And when I heard the the faith concept of it, of how to mix my faith with it then I knew that the more I prayed in tongues, like Jude says, when you pray in tongues, it builds you up on your most holy, holy faith. faith. And then as you begin to release faith with your mouth. Now, I want to go back and say this. Once you, you pray once in faith about something and you say, Father, as far as sure, I'm that's concerned, your prayer petition. that's our prayer petition. Terry and I are believing God for this and this and that. And we stand together in faith before heaven and hell. We call this thing in and we say it's done for us in Jesus' mighty name. Well, as far as God and us are concerned, it's done. And if you believe it's done, you don't ask for it again. Yeah, you don't have to ask or beg God. And that's one thing as a Pentecostal, I was so glad I learned I got that. I don't have that's to talk great. God into you doing know, that. You know, if you went to give your, your, your child a birthday present right. and you put right. it in their hands, yes. <laughs> then it's done. It's and done. then if they came back to you and said, with yeah. it in their hands, said, uh, Mom, Dad, would you give me my present now? Well, it's done. Well, would you give it to me now? Well, it's done. Well, yeah. would you give it to me now? It's in your hand. <laughs> you, you know, God said, I'll bless you. And then we say, oh, Father, please bless me. Please bless me. Please bless me. Please bless me. Oh, Lord, please bless me. You're healed. Oh, Lord, please heal me. Please heal me. Please heal me. Please heal me. <laughs> yeah. You know, God said, it's done. It's it was, done. It so was there's the, your prayer petition. There's your one and done. That's right. That's it right there. And it's that's when you do it. But when you're in a fight and there's the clock and the calendar that are fighting against you, it looks mm -hmm, like. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're you're down to the wire. You're having to believe God that by this date or by that time or by this time next Friday or whenever you've got to have something, then you're going to have to stand in the fight and you're going to have to fight with tongues. You're mm -hmm. going to have to fight with the name, with the blood, with the covenant, oh, yeah. oh, with yeah. the, you know, with the word of God. And, and believing God that as you're doing that, the power of the Holy Spirit is helping you to stand in that time and be able to fight in the realm of the Spirit over things you don't even know that are out there yeah. because you don't know how, how to pray. Romans 8 tells us sometimes we don't even know how to pray. Father, we don't even know how to fix this. We don't know what to do. We don't even know what to say about it, but it's got to get fixed and somehow you've got to fix it. So you know, we're believing you to do that. So we continue to use the name, yes, the, blood, the blood, the word, the covenant, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And I'm telling you, it's learning to wage warfare against things in the realm well, of the Spirit that you e don't even know about. Here's an example. You're all familiar. We've talked about it in the last several programs. Uh, you're all familiar with when I was in Guatemala in the jungle and I raised a little baby girl from the dead. And it took 12 hours. Mm -hmm. All right, American medical doctor, good friend of mine, Dr. Bobby Daniels, and I was there. Bob Lemon, who's in heaven today, was with us. He was there. Uh, Dennis Key was with us. Uh, 
uh, just great friends. And then, of course, the, the missionaries there, Elam and Barbara Stolfus. Elam's in heaven today, but Barbara's still there. Barbara's we still, still communicate, there. still talk. God and, bless and so we were there, and this baby died, and I held her up before God and, and prayed. Well, I, what if I'd have done one and done? Yeah, right. Because I prayed and nothing happened. Yeah. She's still dead. Right. In fact, after nine hours, my doctor friend said to me, said, Terry, I'm concerned about you. She is dead, D-E-A-D, you know, uh, put her down, we'll bury her tomorrow. And he didn't do anything wrong. He's a good man of God, a good Christian man, word of faith guy. But he's also, you know, an intelligent person and a doctor. And he said, she's dead. You know, and you've prayed for nine hours and she's still mm -hmm. dead, you mm -hmm. know. So, so what if I just put her down? And then later at 12 hours, I kept praying at 12 <laughs> hours, me. God raised her up. She, she's in my arms, started crying. Mm -hmm. Well, but there's a picture of me standing there. I'm 20, what is this? This is uh, 77. I'm 27 years old. Um, but I've been praying for 12 hours. And so you can see the bags under my eyes. Hadn't been to bed, you know, all night. You can see the bags under my eyes. You can see I'm just wiped out, worn out, and I'm holding this little baby girl, and she's alive now. And, and I'm holding, and I even said one years ago about that picture. I showed it to somebody, and I said, I said, you can see how I'd been battling hell all night, or how I'd been in a fight all night. And some little goofy cares maniac person said to me, said, "What do you mean you've been in a fight? You just pray one time, and it's over. Jesus did the battle. Jesus did the fight. You didn't have to fight. Oh yeah, I did have to fight." Because if I'd have put her down at any time in those twelve hours, if I'd have put her on the table. That had dug a hole and buried her. So I was still fighting hell mm -hmm. and still fighting the people <laughs> to know I'm not. And I said to the, I said to the, the doctor, no, we're not going to bury this baby. We are not going to bury this baby. We are not going to bury this baby. And so, so it was a fight. And again, the doctor didn't do anything wrong at all. It's just normal, natural situation, circumstance. You know, you prayed nine hours. She didn't work. She's dead. Well, but I'm going to keep praying. So that's not a one and done thing. That's a that's the, when I've what I've said is the secret sauce is you do it again and you do it again. How many times did I use the name? I don't know. When I get to heaven, I'll say, how many times did I use the name that night? And I'm sure they'll have it accounted. How many times did I say in the name of Jesus? How many times did I say the blood of Jesus? How many times did I say, Father, your word says, Father, your covenant says, Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I believe you to raise this baby up, that same spirit. The quickened Jesus from the dead, uh, raised Jesus from the dead, now quickens her mortal body. But it wasn't a one and done prayer. Right. If I'd have done a one and done 12 hours ago, we'd have buried her. Or two hours, we'd have buried her. Or three hours, if I'd have walked off after three hours, we'd right. have buried her. If I'd have walked right. off after five hours, six hours, nine hours, right. put her on the table, we'd bury her tomorrow. If I'd have walked off, we'd have buried her. But I just kept praying. It wasn't a one and done. It was a fight till you win. Stay till the devil leaves. That's, right. that's not a prayer petition. That's a fight. Right. That's a battle. That's a warring prayer. Right. You know, and, and, and that's there's times you have to stand and fight. You know, you know, when Moses died, the devil came to get his body. Right. That's a, that's I don't know really, why he wanted his body, but he wanted Moses' body. That it's in the Bible. And God sent the angel, I mean the archangel, and fought, fought hell and fought the devil over Moses' what body. He said, You're not getting this body. This is Moses. This is the man of God. You're not getting his body. And the devil said, I'm taking his body. And they, the Bible said they fought That's... over Moses' body. Wow. So there is a fighting. As you said, Jude says, fight the good fight good of fight faith. faith. And you'll build yourself up in your most holy faith That's right. by praying in tongues. That's right. How many hours did I pray in tongues that night? Yeah. How many times did I say the blood of Jesus, the name right. of Jesus, the covenant, the word? Well, that... You know, that, that time that you spent praying over that child, that little baby, to be raised from the dead, um, take that over into your everyday life. When you're believing God uh, for something in your body to be healed, when you're believing God for your house to sell, when you're believing God for your child to recover from some sort of terrible diagnosis the doctors have given you, in the meantime, you may get bad reports. Yeah. You may get... Uh, another bad report. Because the you devil's get, still working. And, Hell's still working. The sickness is still working. And, and the enemy's going to attack your mind with, well, it worked for other people, but it's not going to work for you. Or, or you didn't get that last time you prayed. Or, or you know, well, well, it's hard to stay in agreement on this thing when, when the market, housing markets, you know, doing this or that or the other. 
that's where the fight is. It's in the fight that you learn how to exercise. That's where the violence take it by force. That's where you begin to take it by faith and you begin to reinforce your faith by speaking the word, praying in tongues, using the name of Jesus, find scripture after scripture after scripture. And then as you're praying, you're believing God that the Holy Spirit is out there working in his power to turn this thing around, to fix it in such a way that you wouldn't even know anything about. That that's was exactly the problem. Right. That's exactly but right. see, that's how you, you begin to fight in the realm of the spirit against the unknown factors, because you don't know what all it's going to take to raise this person from the dead or change that doctor's report or bring healing into your body exactly. or get that house sold or find the buyers. And, you know, it's like so many things that when I, when I lost my Bible in New Zealand, I didn't know how in the world I was going to, sure. I'm down at the bottom of the earth. And, and I'm telling you, I found that scripture over in Psalm 60. It says, Lord, from the ends of the earth, I will cry unto thee. I said, Lord, if I ever was at the end of the earth, this is it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where my Bible is. I don't know if somebody's picked it up. I don't know if somebody picked it up and, and, and wanted to get it back to me, but set it on their dresser and just forgot about doing it. Or if it was down, got washed out of the car down a drain somewhere, or a hater picked it up and tore it up and threw it in the trash. You know, I didn't know where it was, but I kept praying and interceding there for 10 or 12 days, just kept believing God, kept standing in faith, kept, I mean, I prayed in tongues. I used the name of Jesus. <laughs> I released the angels. Yeah, I did everything I knew to do that's a, every that's an single day. Action. That's an ongoing fight. And many of you are dealing with the ongoing fight. You're not just dealing with an incremental amount of time where something's got to happen, like raising somebody from the dead, like right now. You're, this is an ongoing fight. And you do the same thing in an incremental time, depending on how, how lethal life or death the circumstances are, or if you've got some time on the calendar to wage a good warfare against this thing, and you just say, more time on the calendar doesn't hurt me, no skin off my nose, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna fight this thing, devil, I don't care how long it takes you. And sometimes the devil tries to wear you out in a fight. Well, of course. The longer it goes, fact, he'll try to says wear that the, you that the down. Tries to, tries to wear out the saints. Wear, it, wear you That's out. His if, job is to wear down, wear out the saints so they won't have right. any faith won't be able to win, won't, have, won't be able to fight, won't be able to operate. Well, in tribulation, Jesus said, works patience. You know, let patience have her perfect work so that you may be entire wanting nothing. Mm -hmm. In other words, just use it as a time to... Which we could say lacking nothing, wanting lacking nothing, nothing, lacking nothing. And, and when, you get, when you get in that place, it becomes a very militant place in the spirit. Sure. And we've talked to people, I wanted to say this today on the program, we only have a little bit of time, but we, you have talked so much to people about telling them about how we need to have... <laughs> an Old Testament spirit of a warrior, yeah. and then a New Testament goodness and mercy and love and kindness and Through gentleness. The but the first area where you need to develop that warrior-like concept is in your mind over your own emotions, Absolutely. over your own fears, over your own anxieties, and begin to use the word of God. No, you won't. You will not get out of faith. No, you will not let that fear rise up in you. No, you're not going to let that happen. Because all will battle you. Yeah, because if there was ever something that a warrior had, it's the mind of a warrior that you'll just go attack it and take it out. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to jump on my horse and I'm going to go over there. I've got my sword and my spear and my shield and I'm going to jump on my horse here and I'm going to go take that thing out. Yeah. I'm going to go stop it right now. Yeah. Yeah. And so it has to be a mindset of absolute dominance in the situation. And you're not going to be intimidated and worried about it. Absolutely. No, absolutely. And then whatever God tells you to do, you do it boldly, you do it strongly. And as you pray in tongues, you don't, I mean, I have prayed in probably every conceivable emotional state there is, you know, fear, sure. worry, crying, anxiety, you know, defeat. I mean, I, but you pick, but you pick yourself back up. The real spirit of a warrior, you know, is to just pick yourself back up. And you just get back up on your horsey and you just start back into the fight again. Well, you know, I'd raised other people from the dead before. And none of them took any time at all. Right. None right. of them took, I mean, and, and all of them, God had spoken to me. He said, raise them up or tell them this mm -hmm. or do this. On this little girl, God didn't say anything. I just happened to be in the jungle. She's there in my presence. She's on my watch. Yeah. You know, I said, she's going to die on my watch. You know, we're not going to bury this guy. So, so there's a difference in the gift of faith 
which I've used many times to raise people from the dead, in the fruit of faith. There's a vast difference in the fruit of the Spirit and the gift of the Spirit. Right. And right. we'll talk about that sometime. But but there's a difference when God's using you in the in the gift of the spirits. Right. You know, tongues, interpretation, prophecy, faith, wisdom, word, word and all, all that. Uh, or whether you're just doing it on your own fruit of faith. Uh, that that has to be cultivated and grow. So you, you can run into a fight. When you yes. run into a fight, it's okay to fight as long as you win. Yeah, as long as you can keep fighting in faith, as long as you can keep standing in faith, that's why you need <laughs> that's why you need other people around you that'll help feed your faith. Mm -hmm. Be in a local church that yes. that literally teaches faith. Well, we were and saying like, that last week. You've got to have an anointed church. You've got to have yeah. a word of faith church. You've got to have a pastor that'll teach you and train you the the the, the rights of the word of God. Yeah. The and covenants. You don't want to hang around people that are that are in unbelief, that are worried and fearful when and and you're out there all by yourself. Now you can make it. I mean, it's a tough road to hoe, but it's sure a whole lot easier when you can about be around people of, as the Bible says, like precious, like precious faith. faith. Absolutely. That's how important your faith is. Uh, Peter called it precious faith. Precious faith. Precious faith. So on that note, we're going to have to draw our program to a close today. And we just want to tell you again how much we are thrilled to be able to talk to you about this. Uh, we're going to talk on, on the next couple of programs about some things that we think will reinforce all of that for you and not leave you in any area of doubt as far as we're concerned. <laughs> we want to do everything we can to help you and just remind you again that, you know, one more time, you have to remember God called you more than, more, <laughs> more than, than a conqueror. conqueror. We love you. God bless you. See you next time. When I first got out of the Army, I went straight to, the, to Mexico, to the mission fields. And uh, I, I spent time with a missionary named Wayne Myers. Wayne's 100 years old this year, still preaching. And I ran into a lifestyle that absolutely pricked my heart, grabbed hold of me. I saw a, a man that was living to give. I mean, he, he was he was living his life on planet Earth with the purpose of blessing somebody, lifting somebody, embracing somebody. And I saw that. I said, ah, this is it. I, this is the I'm, I'm embracing this. And I right there made a vow to God and to myself. And I said, this is how I will live the rest of my life, living to give because it's the very nature of God. So I want to encourage you to hook up with that same lifestyle of giving. I mean, embrace it, living to give. And you can give to your local church. You can give to other ministries. I've partnered with ministries since around the world since I was a teenager. And I tell you, God's blessed me for it. I wouldn't trade it. You can also partner with us. We're always happy to em embrace partners. We pray for them every day. But as long as you hook up with that concept, that lifestyle of God, living to give, then it'll be a blessing to others and it'll certainly be a blessing to you. In this powerful best-selling mini book, God's Opinion of You, Terry Mize explains biblical foundations on how to receive and use the authority God has given you. A mini book that fits in your pocket, but packs a big punch. You'll learn to see yourself how God sees you. Righteous, blessed, more than a conqueror. Get your copy today at terrymize.com dot com.